Thank you, Christian. I mean, Vic. Um, all right, so uh, let's just uh, make this fairly fairly brief if we can. Um, the Joint Sustainability Committee, uh, we, we definitely uh, went through many items. Um, I would like to just address the different points and what we can do as far as action here uh, so that we have, have it um, recorded on our own uh, committee meeting. So uh, just for the sake of it, um, I'm Gwendolyn Henry and the chair of the Environment and Sustainability Committee. And I would like to hand it off, Thomas, if you would like to introduce yourself. Thomas Norman, member of the Sustainability Committee. All right, Pat, uh, unmute. Pat Nave, member. Do we have a quorum? Do we need another person? Uh, I was going to contact Mary and see if she could participate very, very briefly. Mm -hmm. um, but if not, uh, we can, I could still move that a uh, couple of items uh, to, to the executive, through the executive board, if necessary. I believe that, that there was just that one item on the Joint Sustainability Committee. Um, so lowering the hands. So uh, with that, um, are there, is there any uh, comment on non-agenda items? Okay, um, I did have a couple of things um, just so that you're aware, or actually this can this can be for future items, so don't worry about that. Um, so, so the next item is uh, discussing the Navy uh, defense fuel support point and that that action. So uh, what what will we be doing at this point um, for that item? There's there's nothing to really uh, work on. At this moment, well, if I may. I think the, the gist of the comments at the joint meeting were to the effect that maybe we needed to to sort of define the, the kind of project that would be acceptable to to us as a neighborhood council, so that we don't end up with a container storage lot, for example. Or, or a you know a, a, a toxic uh, fuel storage facility, something like that. So I think we can certainly do some work on that and come up with uh, with a, a project, couldn't we? Yeah. So uh, perhaps uh, we'll we'll work on uh, we'll work on something in the background. And once again, uh, because the uh, um, community issues is taking point on this. Uh, it will always be referred to them. And uh, Dan was unable to attend. I invited him to our, our meeting. Uh, he was unable to attend, but I, I pretty much relayed everything that he had described to me at, at this particular juncture. So in collaboration with, uh, with community issues, uh, we, can, we can proceed. So um, now the uh, once again the uh, liquid bulk terminal work pro uh, improvements and cement terminal project we had discussed at the joint committee meeting that we were going to create a uh, a special group in order to come up with some environmental comments on this and um, analyze it and of course uh, so we'll have stakeholders from from a few different um, committees involved in this. Uh, any other thoughts to express here? No, I, I, I'm willing to, to take the lead on writing something up, pointing out the thoughts that I have on it. Uh, Tom, do you want a hard copy again? It's 104 pages. Yeah, no, uh, the electronic is fine. You don't need to kill a tree. Okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, I can get out an outline of it. Uh, uh, pretty quickly, probably within the week or something. I do think that um, I, I have a very high regard for the importance of the NOP process, which is where we're at now. It's just to make sure that they're actually considering everything that they need to and in a proper way. And and once again, as a review, um, 
the the deadline actually was very brief and but it has been approached uh, all of the presidents in san pedro have been approached in order to extend that um that deadline is that correct well i sent them an email it's going to take more than one probably to get them to do it yeah and and what was the deadline currently it's april 22nd excuse me august 22nd 45 days <laughs> yeah all right, so uh, uh, I'll just reach out and follow up with our president as well to see that that's done. And we had already uh, created a rule to uh, um, allow the president to do that without it having to go through committee. Right. Yeah, so we're good there. Um, the, I, I put everything that's on the joint committee meeting onto ours just as a formality. Uh, so the the open space green space, uh, which Alan Franz from Coastal had mentioned, um, there is a CIS to write on that, um, and in support of the wildlife corridors, I believe it is. Is that is that the correct? Um, that is also something that has come through the NCSA, and there have been a lot of neighborhood councils that have uh, signed in on this. So um, I'll. I hope to uh, formulate something with and connect it to the relevance of, of Northwest San Pedro. So, and the 30 by 30 plan, uh, that funding opportunity, Thomas, were you in that discussion? Earlier this evening or at a different time? I this is not yeah, you jumped into the meeting and I wasn't sure at what point, but if the, when, did you hear everything that uh, Richard Watson uh, had to say or okay. did you jump in? Yeah, oh, oh, okay, it's that, yeah, I think I missed the beginning context of what you're discussing. Um, so, I mean, I, I feel that I am in support of the, the plan, right? We're trying to have a protected space. Um, so is there some you know, nuance, is it aggressive enough for you or are you just looking for basic support from our, our council when? No, 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 I just wanted to make sure that you understood. Uh, there, there's two different items. There's the open space, green space element. Uh, Alan Franz had one particular aspect to discuss and one of them was uh, a particular motion, a council file on uh, wilderness corridors. And uh, that was something that we as the environmental committee it had, since we had voted on it to bring it to our our respective boards we're discussing it here and because we do not have quorum at this particular moment we will be composing i i guess we can compose that offline in an email but it's basically a cis in support of this and then um i'll i'll present it to our executive board since the time sensitivity on that is also coming here coming close so, so um, the the executive board will be the one to vote on it. Um, I think that that's better than trying to co convene us again for just a CIS. Uh, I, th I agree. You know, I made so, sure to be here, so I would be the a vote for this this meeting. But you know, if we don't have a quorum now, I don't. I, I think yeah. that's the the best way of learning from you and Pat to you know to, to go the way of least resistance and not. And end up failing twice so yeah and then uh the 30 by 30 plan uh this is this is a synopsis of what richard watson was talking about he's actually going to take point on on something there is an initiative that uh is going to actually provide i think it was 80 million dollars it, it's a huge substantial amount of money for um uh that 30 by 30 means uh 30 percent of california uh, should be designated as uh, as protected space by 2030 um, as a biodiversity and preservation of of our species and pollinators and the rest of it. This is the, this is a goal, a global goal, and down to us. It actually uh, there's opportunities here in San Pedro. Richard Watson wants to coordinate different 501c3s and um, that uh, deal with everything from gardening uh, to, uh, yeah, the rivers and conservancies and uh, feed and be fed. Peter Rothay, I was hoping he would be here. 
his feed and be fed would uh, benefit from it. The, the garden that's over at uh, the school, the Christensen Science Center um, and, and such forth. So he's, he's going to try to organize different 501c3s and, and uh, Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy to benefit from this, to possibly get uh, somewhere between 800,000 to a million in grant money to benefit San Pedro. So that's the goal. And um, the, there, there apparently is a, um, a deadline of October to bring a presentation together, but he's very ambitious. He, he's, he's I, I believe that he's been through this process before. So he's, he's got some plans here. Um, so I know Diana is, is point on healthy buildings, healthy places. Is there anything that we could possibly contribute um, to this, Pat? I have no idea. Okay. Um, I will take it back to the, uh, the NCSA. I do know that, that there are discussions there regarding that. And so I'll, I'll try to uh, gather some information from that, from them, uh, some of the input that they have that, that perhaps Diana hasn't and, and the Planning and Land Use Committee hasn't addressed yet. With respect to the, the wildlife thing, I can I share with you what uh, the neighborhood council did before either of you were involved in it. It was uh, some time ago, the neighborhood council uh, put up fifteen thousand dollars out of our budget, combined it with I think about twenty five thousand out of the uh, council office, and the money was used to hire a landscape architect firm, which put together a proposal for rehabbing Peck Park Canyon. So, and then uh, that was submitted by the city uh, and they got $8 million in Prop O funds to rehab Peck Park Canyon. But that came out of an initiative by the Neighborhood Council, really. So there's things that the Neighborhood Councils can do to, uh, to participate in these, uh, in these, in these projects. And this, this seems to be similar. Uh, with that, uh, do you remember kind of the decade of that and what uh, rehab projects actually did occur? Oh, well, it was the whole revamping of the thing. Hey, Diana, can you come in a minute? Diana was president at that time and, and um, or John Greenwood was one of the two of them. Because this segues into uh, uh, one of the next topics, actually. Uh-huh. Um, well, while we wait for Diana, um, there she comes, she's walking down the hall. Mm -hmm. Gwen wanted to know the chronology on the um, Peck, Peck Park rehab and what uh, projects in there were funded out of the Prop O funds. I think it was the entire rehab of the canyon, like three, three and a half miles of trails and all of that. It was right? basically the entire rehab of the canyon. Yeah. There was another, there was another small grant, but it was it's very small. So, so the trails were uh, and the bridge and uh, the bridge across the stream, those kind of things. The bridges were added. The trails were repaired. Place Wonderful. Was yeah, place was it was up. quite a it was quite a bit of money, several million dollars. Eight million of proper money. Was it eight? Yeah. Sure it was so the there. so the the trails I see that are are kind of crumbling. Um, yeah, uh, the, those were all fixed and th those degraded over like 10, 20 years. Yeah, the, the biggest problem is, was that the, the the diverters that they put in that were there to um, keep the water from destroying the trails, they they put in these kind of rubber ones and all of those yeah. are completely destroyed. Yeah. And then they also put in some brick uh, some brick, um, not brick, um, stone ones. The stone, the stone ones were better. This is something about Gabriel. The stone ones were, were are better, but they need to be cleaned out to work properly. And well, we've, with, had, we've had many a conversation with Rec and Parks about it, and they actually did come in and and regraded them and did some repairs about a year ago after we complained. Yeah, uh, it was the original project. 
in the 2000s. Probably at least 10 years ago. More than that. Was, were you president or was John Greenwood president? Who was? I think I was president. So that's been 14 years. Well, I've been so. president twice. So, you know, I don't know if my first time or the second time, Pat. Well, I'm I'm wondering if the the 30 by 30 plan can include uh, rehabilitation of some of the parks within San Pedro. Um, I I think that Peck Park is an extraordinary place because it, it isn't just a a landscape park; it is also a natural area that that could benefit from those kind of funds again. And I'm going to jump ahead because we're talking about it. I'm going to jump ahead to items nine. Which was, which is related to this, and this is why why this is coming to uh, a point of interest. That the recent brush fires at Peck Park, uh, they they were due, you know, they they were troublesome in that the um, the non-native grasses had uh, uh, pretty much expanded through the canyon area. And uh, Diana, I don't know if you were a part of this discussion before, and I'll try to be brief. Um, Probably so. So um, uh, I've sp spoken to Deanna Dedman and uh, the, the situation is, is that currently the park's schedule is on a brush clearance plan of doing this just before July 4th. And yeah. as you and I know, uh, the, the brush gets dry now on a completely different schedule. And with those, those uh, uh, fires, were deeply concerning and they they actually um burned all the way to those lovely trails that had been widened uh which was a good thing um and with uh community the the neighbors who had to uh defend that space and with you know the helicopters and the fire department they were able to prevent the fire from burning all the way up to fence lines um, but um, I'm actually, that was the item that I really wanted to talk what's about the, here. What's the point you're trying to get to, Gwen? I'm, I'm fully aware but, of what happened. Yeah, the, well, the, yeah, it, it, it's partly for recording. Uh, the, to look to um, write a letter or communicate to the proper entities in order to uh, try to get the schedule changed to be earlier in the season or to coincide with uh, when the brush actually is dry or at, uh, get added funds in order to do that. But they also, Deanna was talking about that the, the maintenance staff, which is now being expanded again, they're, they're hiring a full staff after the pandemic, um, that they are interested in uh, making those spaces, you know, planting native plants and renaturalizing it and getting rid of those, uh, those non-native grasses. So uh, they are interested in uh, volunteer staff, but when we talk about that $8 million of funding, is, might there be another opportunity to uh, get funding for the parks? Well, there might be other opportunities, but not from Prop O. Yeah, not not Prop O, but uh, maybe yeah. 30 by and 30 plan. Yet yeah, there are other opportunities, and the city does need to look to apply for some of the other opportunities. There's grants right now for parks, but the city has to be the one to apply for it. Okay, so that that's an action then. Um, okay, so are you already aware of, of the specific grants? The I LA count, the count, LA County has the um. I don't know which prop it is, but LA County has has money for that. There's a specific grants out right now. Um, they will probably they may have closed by now. I'm not sure they were they were out recently. Well, we were talking okay. about. There also before there were also state grants. We applied. We we actually got a state grant before, but again, Rec and Parks had to be the applicant. We worked on it. Um, we did we did a lot of the um, legwork to get it, but Rec and Parks had to apply. So it's really a discussion. I think more with Deanne around funding opportunities and getting them to look for and how we can assist them in applying for funding opportunities. Okay. This is something that you should know that Jason on our committee has been very interested in and we've talked about a lot of planning. We've, we've taken it every single year. We've taken a walk through that canyon with Rec and Parks maintenance staff. You know, we've come to the board, we've written letters, 
about all, most all of these things. We asked them to um, start using the goats to do the the right. maintenance, but that has to be done earlier in the year. So we've pointed that out. Deanne's very supportive of that, but at at, at the point in time that we were writing, um, the general manager didn't seem to be real supportive. And there's a new general manager, but the new general manager is acting until we get a new mayor. So this is something that's sort of like, well, we might be able to do something, but our best shot's gonna be once the new mayor comes in, I think. Okay. Okay, well, well, uh, I would love- I, That's sort of been my attitude. Let's just kind of, kind of put it on hold until the new mayor gets here and we know who yeah. the, who the Rec and Parks general manager is going to okay. be. Okay, well, well, I hope that, I hope that uh, to help support you uh, with this and uh, try to combine resources, uh, this is this is now this is now an issue that public safety even now considers a priority to yeah. ensure that the park is is properly done. So so I think that we have a, a good consensus of, of council members yeah. who would like to put energies into this. So there's a, community, so, there's a whole group of community people. I walked yeah. down there with probably 50 community people who showed up to talk about it with recommendations. Well, 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 definitely invite me the next time that happens. Um, those two, those two walks uh, recently with that that first fire that happened uh, were very beneficial. Um, and I think that we have even uh, a larger San Pedro community um, energy to to try to that's, even that's community like action. So, it is a so, large. I'm getting I'm getting ready to go back to finish up what I was doing, Glenn. Thank Let's you, go. thank you, Diana. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. So, so that's, that's pretty much that. Um, okay, so uh, th these are some items that I, I kind of wanted to discuss. Um, so there, there has been some, uh, there has been some county funding and um, there are some city funding uh, for this, but, uh, What's happening now, of course, is that uh, housing in, in Los Angeles and many regions uh, is being scooped up by private investors. So uh, first time home buyers are, are losing out and there's, there's an increase in rentals. And I, um, I've had two discussions, independent discussions with people and it kind of came down to this that, uh, Climate change goals are to try to incentivize people to have uh, EV chargers. Uh, there are grants, there are you know um, rebates and grants and all sorts of things to supply EV chargers on properties. Um, but with the transition of home ownership to rental, uh, I, I've got to honestly say that there are a lot of uh, 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 rental companies, management companies and the like that aren't interested at all in, in even making the slightest effort to provide this to any renter. So um, I know that there, are, there, there is a program uh, to, to incentivize this, but I think that it's kind of a, uh, where we're at a crisis where climate change and the need to transition and, and, and put this, the EV chargers in and and go towards better, um, more energy efficient air conditioning. You you name it. Um, solar panels uh, is where we're kind of flipping over the people who might be willing. Uh, so I'm hoping that we can possibly uh, come up with some action, or even if it's simply outreach to the programs that do exist. But um, I'm hoping that some of you know we can think about this. Um, because I know that that here in San Pedro, there's a lot, you know, there's an increase in rental. So hopefully you can do something with that. Um, all right. Um, and I've had two discussions with two different neighbors as well about the concerns about the two day a week, eight minute watering restriction and the future of watering and irrigation in, um, in the area. Uh, and again, I, I, I hope that I, 
you know, I, I understand that planning and land use, uh, the laws for zoning and and uh, requirements for cisterns and and rain barrels and uh, water flow off of buildings and uh, trying to create those um, those uh, water percolation points. It's it's based on what the a few, just a few different um, uh, zoning rules for that that particular item, and and a lot of times uh, buildings are not required to put in solar um, and the rest. But with the two day a week eight minute watering restriction, um, I've had people talk about all sorts of uh, concerns that the city isn't moving forward enough, and there should be more. Uh, there's also concerns with the program of incentivizing, incentivizing taking lawns and replacing it with a with a low watering thing, and that that being a bust. People putting in astroturf and and that kind of thing. So I I'm hoping that there might be uh, within this community some kind of outreach. If there's any other action that can be done, I'd appreciate that. Um, Richard didn't go through it, but is there anything on the C40 cities zero emission shipping that anybody knows about or the Clean Air Action Plan? Is there anything that anybody has heard? Not me. Okay. And uh, with air quality monitors, to let you know what the next action is, um, I'm going to be approaching and sending a letter to South Coast AQMD to inquire uh, how their how their contracting process is going to to get a new contractor for air monitors and uh, continue with that. Um, is there any bills, legislation, environmental action, or updates that anyone can think of to bring bring to our community? I don't know of any. You don't know of any? Okay. Um, just so you know, I've uh, I've been requested by uh, the president to start bringing presentations to the board. Uh, one that I was able to uh, quickly bring up was the solar panel project at the end of Westmont. The Westmont, um, it's the, uh, oh, I just had it up on my West computer. Oh, wow. The panel, yeah. the, the 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 big solar project. Yeah. Uh, that same that's a uh, part of the FIT program, the the DWP FIT program, which is um, uh, essentially businesses put in the solar panels. Some businesses are uh, receive uh, rent of their roof space, so they they receive a, a passive income for signing in on this program. And of course the the panels that were put in there, I wasn't aware of this. I didn't, I, I was completely unaware that the, that particular project was uh, the second largest. It was the first largest until Apple, the Apple facility was finally uh, completed just this other year, but um, it was the largest urban solar panel project and provides power to 5,000 homes locally. And of course, all to see is also being done by the same collaboration. So I was hoping to have a presentation to our board to, to discuss this. Um, I think that that's a good intro to some of the environmental issues that, that impact us. Um, and I wondered if there were any other presentations. Uh, the, the water situation was another one that I, I wanted to possibly uh, bring forward. The watering issue. I like your um, idea, Gwen, and um, possibly I'll have uh, somebody for you maybe November. Um, the professor that's got the air quality monitor, he's now doing a second phase outside my house and inside my house to compare how much, you know, my inside breathing is getting worse. So it might be a little duller, you know, he's a, he's a scientist, 
but but still think it might be interesting and it could be a model of how we can better use the monitors we're getting because the same monitor just um because he's got a, a wilmington san pedro study going so i i told him i would introduce him once he could give me the report i i, I want to find out what's going on so not necessarily sometimes professor a little dull but but i think it's germane to this committee well, well, with that, Thomas, um, I, I can communicate with uh, Edward Aval and Andrea Rico from Keck. They they have a huge uh, air monitor thing. So uh, the the history of, of the significance of, of that project that they've done is has directly impacted the Clean Air Action Plan and the health of, of this community. So perhaps we could have a presentation with all, all parties to, to show this and where and where we want to go in the future with our community with with northwest that sounds like a good idea so november you say there, there's an opportunity sounds great yeah. okay um so um i i believe that that's it the one the one item will be the the cis and uh bringing together a um a group to work on the cement terminal, the, the birth project, and uh, is with any other items, how are we? Last chance? Well, turn off the, uh, turn off the recording and, and I want to talk about something. Okay. Uh, 